Welcome everyone to How to Build Your Personal Learning Plan. My name is Helen Blunden, or you could find me on Twitter as Activate Learn. Well, actually, let's face it, you could find me across on any of the socials. Um, today, we're going to be doing something for the next hour to talk about tips and strategies to be continually learning in a world of constant change. And boy, is there a world of constant change. Everything just changed drastically since eight weeks ago. So for today, we're going to spend an hour at this um, session, but I want it to be somehow interactive. So feel free to ask your questions because we've got Debbie who is moderating behind the scenes. Say hi, Debbie. Hi, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Well, Debbie is going to be behind the scenes moderating your questions. Now, throughout this whole session, what I do recommend um, you do is have your phone nearby because I'm going to be asking you to scan some QR codes. QR codes to get to more content and there's also a competition to, to get involved with. Now, as well as that, what I'd love for you to do is it's going to be me talking for most of the time, but um, I'm someone who loves to share what I learn and I'd love for you to do the same across the different social networks that you're part of. So throughout the session, feel free to take a photo of the different slides and then share these across to your various social networks. But don't just repeat what I've just said. Uh, what I do encourage you to do is add your own value, add your own thoughts to the, the content that I'm sharing here. And don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag M365May. Uh, so that we can find that, that that post and also continue on with the discussion. Now, before we jump in, I've got a couple of slides that uh, I have to show. And the first one is welcoming our speakers and participants from around the world. Now, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this online conference is hosted and the traditional custodians of the land where our Australian based speakers and participants are located. We also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and future. And wonderfully, we've got our New Zealand uh, colleagues and our peers. We welcome you and acknowledge uh, all our speakers and participants from New Zealand. Thank you for supporting this hui. I hope I said that correctly. And the next slide, of course, is a code of conduct. Like I said before, feel free to share any anything that I've got here, but please be respectful. Please be constructive, helpful and kind to me. Don't make it personal. <laughs> All right, so first things first, what I want you to do is I actually want you to st start to think about what has been the most interesting project that you have learned from. Now think of something that could have been a work related topic or a project that you worked on quite recently, or it might be something that you've done at home, or you might have a sideline project, or you um, may have done something that you learned by yourself or in a group. It may have been something that, uh, you know, time passed really quickly. You got in the flow. It was challenging to you, but at the same time, it was actually quite inspiring and it got you thinking and experimenting and testing and trialing and doing and learning and wanting to share that information. So have a think about um, what kind of project that you have been learning from, because what we're going to do today is we're going to re-inspire and kind of think about the environment and the conditions of what you were doing and what you went through there and then how you can put it into a workplace context so that you could be continually learning. For me, when I think about my most interesting project that I've been involved with, uh, the first thing that tops to mind was in the last couple of years, I was involved in a global collaborative project where uh, it was uh, creating a, uh, a fake news show, believe it or not. There was a group of us all around the world. We had never met each other. We only knew each other from uh, social media. And one of the guys, Cami from Glasgow, said, hey guys, wouldn't it be great if we create this um, online news, news channel and we could share it out to our social networks? And there were about seven of us and we all thought, yeah, great idea. We're all going to be particular reporters. So I took on this avatar, this personality, this foreign correspondent who I called myself um, Sharon, don't call me Shazza, break news, a Luddite foreign correspondent who 
uh, remembered the old press days and the old newsrooms and lamented the, uh, I guess, how news and uh, foreign correspondence was uh, going ahead in the world. Now, this whole experience of playing Shazza was completely new to me. It was also completely new working with a global network of people who I'd never met. And we ran this uh, show for two seasons and a spin-off series. Um, and all up, it was about 30 episodes. Now, each episode was half an hour and we ran this every single week. Now, the whole idea was I basically created the story I scripted my own um, segment, I shot my own segment, I edited each video, uh, I created the character, I developed the character, I was responsible for the social media, I experimented with some green screen techniques and basically uh, this was I guess a starting point for me to understand how to use video and tell stories and create characters with a comical bent. So as you can see, doing a fun project actually really helped with my on-screen presence, um, with my video and content creation skills for work. So think of something that you can do uh, that in, in, your, in your own work. So who am I? Who am I? Uh, like I said, my name is Helen Blunden and I'm a community manager at Adopt and Embrace. Now we're a Microsoft partner. We help support um, a lot of organisations through the change and adoption of Office 365. You may have heard of us. Now, I don't come from a Microsoft background, so I actually come from a learning and development background, but I have presented at various conferences nationally and internationally, and it's all been related around learning and development. I've been blogging since blog, blogs first started, I think it was back in 2000, 2006, where I showed and shared my work online. But in 2014, I moved that over to video where I used the Instagram stories and Snapchat stories just through the use of um, a, uh, the camera on my phone to create daily stories of showing and sharing the process of my work and thinking. All this has resulted in uh, all sorts of different opportunities that have come my way. And one of the biggest opportunities I had late last year was being a community reporter for Microsoft Ignite. But before all that, I was also a reporter for Learning Now TV, which is an internet um, subscriber channel for learning and development people. You may have heard of that. But throughout this whole process, what I love to do is I love the process of learning. And uh, I have three hashtags that I use. And this is something that I'd like you to start thinking about. What hashtags can you use when you are learning for yourself? The ones I use, if I want to just share some very general inspirational tweets uh, or LinkedIn posts, I use ha always be learning. If I share any tips or tools that would be of value to other people, I'll also include hashtag activate my learning. And if I find stuff that I want to experiment on myself, my own little hashtag, I use hashtag Helen experiments. So I'd like to you to start thinking about your first tip here is what is a hashtag that you can use that you can filter and have some decent content come to you in all sorts of different ways. So my next question I want to ask is, how do you go about learning something new? Now, I can't see your uh, q I'm just going to quickly go over to the Q&A section and see if there's any questions. But Debbie, feel free to just jump in and see if there's any questions that are being asked out there. Um, and just let me know because I'm more than happy to answer them. So the first question is, how do you go about learning something new? And this is a question that I have Many people come in and uh, come and ask me. They go, Helen, I really want to learn, you know, X, Y, and Z. What is it that I can do? Where do I start? Who who do you know who can help me? So this is why I started to uh, think about that. This is an area that I'd like to share out to people. So you need some kind of plan, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before we go into the plan, I want you to scan this QR code because you might be thinking, well, why is it important to learn? Uh, the stuff I learned at university and school is enough, or is it? 
Okay, so scan this uh, QR code. It'll take you to a form. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll go into the browser and refresh the browser and see what the results are. So the question I wanna ask you here is, how much of the stuff that you learnt at school or university do you actually use today in your normal day-to-day -day work? Is it all of it? Is it none of it? Let's go in and find out. So I'm gonna refresh the screen, see if there's any responses coming through. Hopefully you can see that. Um, okay, we've got a few responses and it looks like less than 25%. So not much there. <laughs> I'll just refresh again. It's what is to be expected. Someone has is using about 25 to 50%. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> but it looks as if on the whole, um, less than 25%. Okay, thank you for... Uh, thank you for that. I'm just going to go back to my presentation. So really, I just wanted to see a very quick run through. So what is happening is, I don't know about you, but when I was at university, that was over, I've lost track, many years, over 20 plus years. And most of the time I sat in the lecture room utterly confused. I was doing a, a biochemistry degree and also an organic chemistry degree, and I have not used either in my work at all. So this is what, um, you know, and I, I, I tend to think that many of us have been at university or school for many years ago, and we probably haven't put into practice what we learned. And it made me think of um, a movie, Men in Black. Uh, Men in Black was playing recently on the TV. I was flicking through the, the remote and um, the movie came, came on and I saw that Will, um, who was played by the Tommy Lee Jones character, when they had found out that there were aliens on Earth, he had turned to his his sidekick um, and he said, that was Jay, Jay, who was played by Will Smith. He goes, 1,500 years ago, everyone knew that the Earth was the centre of the universe. 500 years ago, everyone knew that the Earth was flat. And 15 min minutes ago, you knew that humans were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. They had just found out that there were aliens on Earth. So I thought to myself, yeah, imagine what we'd know tomorrow. And then I started to think, man, eight weeks ago, when all this COVID stuff happening, just the amount of information has changed. And so we don't have to look far in our um, previous past to realise that information um, and what we know as truthful or correct or accurate in the past may not be uh, the same as it is um, today. For example, smoking. Back in the day, I, I, I don't know about you, I, I love the show Mad Men. I've been watching the Mad Men series and they're all puffing on their cigarettes in the office. And I thought to myself, back then, uh, smoking cigarettes was considered normal uh, and um, and it was, you know, there was scientific evidence to say that uh, it's actually quite good. But in actual fact, it's not because medical research has found that um, it's actually bad for us. So this just goes to show that the amount of information um, that we know and is changing all the time. And so we need to be continually learning how much of our the information that we know is actually irrelevant um, over time. So you may have seen this knowledge doubling curve that uh, Buckminster Fuller uh, came up with. And he basically said that knowledge is doubling at the beginning of the century, knowledge was doubling every century. But what we're finding now in 2020, knowledge is doubling about um, every 12 hours. And what we knew at school may not necessarily serve us well for the future. And we're seeing this today. Now, one of the things I really love is you may have seen um, this uh, Microsoft Loop by Brad Grissom, who talks about where work gets done and where there's uh, different applications of Office 365 uh, of work. But whenever I see the word work, I cross it out and stick the word learning in. So where learning gets done. And so I know a lot of people think that learning means having to take a big chunk of time out of your day to physically 
force yourself to do something a bit different. It doesn't have to be that way. You can actually integrate your learning with your actual workflows. And I love this picture because to me, I see that learning gets done in across all the layers. You can get learning that's done in your actual work projects, but there is also a level of learning that can happen with the communities that you're from um, and the networks that you're part of. And if you're interested, uh, look at Harold Jarkey, who's got an excellent blog called Life in Perpetual Beta, where he talks about um, connecting work and learning and how we, we currently work in work teams, but there's opportunities for us to be really stretching ourselves and connecting with more diverse people and diverse communities and participating in those communities and those networks to really bring new ideas and be exposed to uh, new people, new insights, broaden our own perspectives, challenge our own perspectives and then bring those into work. But before I'm going to jump into my um, uh, framework, there is another QR code to scan. This is a really good one for you. So scan this code because there is a competition and you can be in the running to win some, I assume there will be swag. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, go through and see if there's any questions. Doesn't look as if there are, but that's okay. Um, uh, we'll continue on. So what is, you know, where do you start? Okay, this is a process that I use um, and it has helped me actually develop a plan for where to start from. Instantly, your brain is probably thinking, oh my God, Helen, it's 11 steps. That's way too much, you know, cognitive overload. That's why I just highlighted in yellow. Just let's stick with the first three. What's the problem that you're trying to solve? What do you need to do? That is, what do you need to achieve? And a third one, who are the people that can help you? So let's jump into those. Okay. The very first thing I'd like you to start thinking about, what is the problem that you want to try and solve? Okay. So think about it in tangible terms. And what I'd like to do is I actually like to visualize what future, what does this look like? And so at the moment, I'm trying to learn French, right? And the problem I'm trying to solve is I see myself walking down a French street, having a conversation with a French local without feeling embarrassed. So I'm, I'm saying the problem I need to solve is I need to be able to converse um, with a local. But what I really want to do is the performance I want to achieve is I want to open up a French book or a magazine. I want to be able to read it without the use of a dictionary. Um, also, like I said, walk comfortably, comfortably down a street and speak to a local. So that that's my goal, okay? And that is my end goal. That's what I measure everything against. At the same time, I'm also my adopt and embrace work. Um, I actually want to learn how to use Power Automate. And the problem I'm trying to solve there is I want to actually reduce the time I'm spending on manual and repetitive tasks. And I thought to myself, there's got to be an easier way to do rather than, than copying and pasting. So Power Automate would be the, the way to do it. But I had to give myself a challenge. And my challenge was every time I look at a process in my normal day-to-day -day job, at least 50% of those process I want to automate. So it means that I'm not kind of chunking down time for learning, but I'm integrating my learning in the workflow. So once I am doing a process in my work, at that point in time, I'm going to start, I'm going to stop myself and I'm going to start asking questions. How can I improve this process? What can I do differently? So this is how I um, encourage you to start to think differently about what is the problem and what is it that you want to do. Now, the third thing is who are the people who can help you? So this is where you've got to start building your personal learning network. Now, these are the people you know, you like, and you trust. And these are people who are across all different networks and online communities who are open enough with their sharing of value. And that value is they are genuine in sharing resources, tips, content um, around that particular gap. You've got to find these people. You've got to ask people, if they know people who can help you with that particular topic that you want to get better at. So I would encourage you to start looking at, um, I use Twitter. Twitter for me has been the best professional develop development network I could ever use. 
And I use the Twitter list. So I don't know if many of you are using lists, but this could be something for you to explore. Create a list and then add people who you know, like and trust, who are your personal learning network around that particular skill gap. And then rather than having an unwieldy Twitter, lead, Twitter feed with just tweets everywhere, you use your Twitter list to actually see what these people are sharing, okay? So think about ways of being able to build your personal learning network. Now, the personal learning network does not have to be people out on the social networks. That can actually be people in your own company. So look at people who are inside your company, who are showing and sharing their work, who are sharing good stuff. They could be on Yammer, they could be on the internet, they could be, you could just basically ask someone, who do you learn from, Joe? And they'll probably say, well, Jane down the department is the bee's knees, if you wanna know X, Y, Z, she knows everyone, she knows where things are at. You've gotta find those nodes, you have gotta find those people. Um, so here's an opportunity to try and learn from, from people, but really interesting for those who are following what Microsoft is doing with uh, Project Cortex, Project Cortex is going to, I reckon, will be a game changer because it will identify and make visible these people in your organisation. So I just do encourage you, if you are not participating or contributing uh, in any of the networks or across any of the, the platforms, you're going to be you're going to be invisible and you don't want to be invisible in this world. So another thing you could do is you can find out what online neighbourhoods they're hanging out with. And um, they could be in LinkedIn. You can join a LinkedIn group or a community. You can, um, Microsoft has have these great um, technical communities. So find out where these people are hanging out in, go and join those communities, participate in those communities, like their posts, reply to their posts, share their posts. This is all about building, I guess, credibility and also building, um, I guess, and establishing rapport with these people. They could be in Yammer. They could be in Slack. Shock horror. Put a Slack picture in a Microsoft 365 uh, presentation. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where these people are hanging out. You've got to find them because you're going to learn from them. All right, before I go into the, the next step, I just want to quickly get out of here and see if there's any more questions. Are there any questions? No, it doesn't look as if there is any questions. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Now the next uh, the next three steps are what tools and resources do you have access to? And these tools can be free. They could be company related or um, you know within your own company. They could be they could be paid. You could pay for these. Um, they could be part of universities. Um, they could be out on the web. You name it, we'll go into that. That's the first one. The second one is, is it safe to learn? So that is, in order for you to be learning at work, you've got to feel safe at work. Your manager has to support you in order to do this. Um, and then the third aspect is, what can you test it out on? So let's jump into those next three things. Okay. So what are the formal education courses and programs you can do? I've just put some here, but all the ones that are there, it's just a little bit, it's just a smidgen of them. You can find so much stuff online and no wonder people just get overwhelmed with what is out there um, when there's just so much choice. These are ones that I have used in the past. Obviously, Microsoft Learn has an excellent learning platform with all sorts of different courses, resources, programs, you name it. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. It is brilliant, but you can also do what's known as MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. Things like Coursera or FutureLearn. I've done some courses through FutureLearn. Again, these are all free. They're all, ava all available. Um, and the stuff that you can find is amazing. There's open. There's also one called um, Open Culture and Open MOOC. You can find anything under the sun. Um, Udemy, uh, LinkedIn Learning is another one. Um, and you might say, but Helen, LinkedIn Learning is so expensive and our company doesn't have a subscription. I'm gonna show you, tell you a little bit of a secret. Go to your local library, go and ask your local library and join your local library because local libraries 
have free subscriptions to lynda.com. Lynda and LinkedIn Learning are very similar. So you don't need LinkedIn Learning. You don't have to pay for it if your company doesn't have access to it. Go join your library. You're going to have access to lynda.com, which means you'll have access to a whole heap of online learning courses. So look, go wild. These are all these um, different courses you can do. You can even go to universities. A lot of universities, a lot of TAFEs are putting their stuff online. It's just mind blowing what you can do. OK, so go wild. The other thing um, you can do is what are the tools and apps to curate content to come to you? Because there's so much stuff out there. I don't know about you. I like stuff to come to me, but the stuff that comes to me, I need to, I guess, curate it and filter it. So all the stuff that comes to me is good stuff. I don't want crap. OK, so what we can do is we can use all sorts of different other um, tools. I use Feedly Pro, which trawls through RSS readers and I could um, highlight websites that are relevant for me that share really good content or people who share really good blog posts. I curate them so I see them. Um, uh, you could use Scooper, you could use Pinterest if you wanted to, you could use Pocket. Um, you might not be aware that Delve has some curation boards that you could favorite certain documents um, and then create boards in Delve around your particular documents that you want to uh, store and have access to. But I also use another tool called Wakelet, which curates um, collections of bookmarks, and it is a brilliant, brilliant tool. Um, and this this is uh, this allows me to be able to collect all these bookmarks and then create some kind of story around it, a collection that makes sense for me. So Wakelet is highly recommended and it's also a plugin for Microsoft Teams. Another way I like content to come to me is I use the Office 365 um, applications like Power Automate. This is one I created uh, using Louise Fries's excellent article. She wrote this article on how to use adaptive cards for beginners. And I thought to myself, I can use this every time I tweet Helen experiments. It generates a flow that comes into Microsoft Teams for me, where then I could set a due date for me to learn that. OK, so I'm actually building my own learning plan. Man, this is powerful stuff. Managers out there will go, this is fantastic. Why? Because their people are actually creating their own learning plans with the tools that we've got available. So I highly recommend if you're interested in how to do this, go check out Louise's uh, article and play around with Power Automate and see what you could do with getting information to come to you. Now, the second box was, remember how I said, is it safe to learn? Well, we've got to feel safe in our places of work and you've got to have a manager who is supporting you to learn at work. Uh, Paul Woods, who's my manager at Adopt and Embrace, he is um, more than supportive. OK, we're constantly learning every day and he actually encourages us, my peers, to be able to um, share what we learn every day through Yammer. So that's one thing what one thing we do, but we also dedicate a full learning day uh, once every quarter where we can just focus on what it is that we, we need to do. So think about ways of how you can get your manager involved and getting them to see the value in learning at, or incorporating you know, snippets of what you're learning during the day and then sharing them out to your peers. And you can do them if you've got Yammer, if you've got an intranet, if you've got SharePoint web pages, however you want to do it, there are ways and means of being able to share your knowledge to your peer network uh, at work. All right, so let's move on. The next step is, OK, you've got your skill and the knowledge that you want to pick up on or a task or an activity you want to do. The next step I would do is what can you experiment on? Now, I would say pick, of, pick on something that you do in your normal day to day work. So apply it to your work context because it would make it more meaningful. It would be relevant. Also, your boss would want to know the results. Um, your peers would want to know the results. Hey, and you can dabble. You can dabble on it. So um, one of the things, these are a couple of examples I did. The first one is um, I'm currently at Adopt and Embrace. I'm doing a, a project on policies and I wanted to create an assessment, but I was I just didn't want to um, make a manual process out of it. So I created a form and I've in the background, I've got Power Automate generating some of the flows. 
again, it's because I wanted to learn Power Automate, but I'm applying it to a work project. Another one is um, some years ago, I was invited to present at the Char uh, Charles Change Management Institute and talk about QR codes in learning. And I thought to myself, oh, I don't want to do a boring presentation. I don't want to do a boring presentation on QR codes. There's got to be some interesting way to do it. And I thought, I'm a knitter. Why don't I knit? This is an idea. Why don't I knit a QR code? So I put all my information, created a QR code, transposed the black and white bits into a graph paper. Little one black square equals one black stitch. One black, uh, one white square equals one white stitch. I knitted myself a QR code, and um, that was the basis of my talk. And I went to. I went to the, the presentation and I talked about, you know, how we could use QR codes in learning. I integrated a story about social learning and how knitters use social learning. People could scan my knitted stuff and get my information. See, see how it all links. But as well as that, um, I had knitters even starting to contact me saying, what can they do to use QR codes in their work? So, OK, I'm just going to quickly alt tab again and see if there are any questions. No questions. What's going on, everyone? Come on, we want some questions. <laughs> ah, it's like there are, there's a couple of comments <laughs> under the published one. Ah, there are. Ah, there are. Let's have a look. OK, yes, I should actually scroll, should I? Wow, British Museum has revamped its online collections database, making over. That's right. Brilliant, brilliant. Love this. Um, you have so many opportunities and ways to, to learn and a lot of institutes and companies, um, organisations, galleries, museums are doing this stuff. In fact, you might be interested, uh, Jane Hart and I have created, this is a little aside, a little website, well, it's not little, it's, it's called www.discover2, with number two, learn.com. So, Deb, if you wouldn't mind writing that, yeah, www.discover to learn. We have curated a whole heap of this type of activities, um, Eddie, like the British Museum, a whole heap of different fun activities that people could do during COVID um, so they wouldn't get bored just watching Netflix. Um, feel free to have a look at that. And um, yes, that's something that we could definitely do. So thanks for that. OK, moving right along. The next step is how do, you, how do I know if I'm on the right track, feedback, drills and practice? How do I create meaning and relevancy from it? And then what can I apply what I've learned? OK, so in our plan, we've got to have some feedback and drills. We've got to have some uh, reflective activities and we've got to have some applications and some uh, context. So let's look at those in turn. This was really interesting for me because how can you put feedback practice and drills into work? I mean, this could be a question for everyone out there. How do you incorporate feedback practice and drills if you want to learn something new at work? One of the examples um, I recently did was, like, like I said, I wanted to learn French and it became so painfully obvious to me that I need to be immersed in the language. I need to listen to it. I need to have it spoken around me. I need to speak it uh, and I need to have some feedback of people telling me whether I'm saying it correctly or incorrectly. And so I put it out there to my Twitter network that I was doing um, French. I put out my learning plan and voila, I had some responses from people who I didn't even know spoke French. And so Jacinta here was telling me that, yes, she, speak, she speaks French. She lived in, in France and she'd be more than happy to help me. So this um, gives you an idea that uh, you need to kind of, you can't just read stuff. You need to actually immerse yourself into whatever you want to learn and incorporate some practice and drills. There's another site for me, I've been exploring italki, um, which is for language learning, where you go in this site and you can look up uh, various teachers and people who are online. And through Skype, you book a coaching session and they speak to you in the language that you want. And this then provides the feedback and the practice and the drills. 
Now, I'd be interested in here, I mean, language is different, but I'm just thinking, what would you do in a, I guess, in a work-based context? Say, for example, if you wanted to learn how to use SharePoint or how to code or how to use a particular developer language or whatever it was, how would you incorporate some feedback practice and drills? Because you need to have this when you are learning. You simply just can't read stuff and let it go. You'll forget it. You won't have any uh, way of being able to apply it. So maybe in the in the um, in the Q and A section, have have an idea of and share what that might be. With language training, you can also it doesn't have to be about language training. There are sites out there that um, basically create flashcards. So in the past, I remember writing stuff down on palm cards and actually testing myself with palm cards. You can do that online and there's a, a whole heap of different tools out there to be able to do it like um, Study Stack, Quizlet. Um, and we, you may know of others um, out there, uh, survey tools that generate random questions. Uh, there was one that Amy Holden, who recently spoke at Microsoft 365, one of the presentations I also sat in, she mentioned a power platform pub quiz. And I said, thought to myself, that's genius. That is a way of being able to practice and do drills in a fun way. So doing some quizzes. So the next box is how do you create meaning from what you're learning? OK, so you've sat down and you've gone through all this and you go, I need to be able to understand what it is that I'm learning. Now, one of the ways I do it, it does not mean that you have to do this. You're going to have to find your own way of being able to do this is making time for some reflection. OK, and I create meaning through um, using my, where's my phone? Here we go. I use a phone. And I use currently I'm using Instagram stories to basically take snapshots every single day of what it is that I'm doing, sharing and learning. So if it's related to work, I have pretty much snapped my Power Automate process. What I'm learning with that Power Automate, I've snapped and um, shared how I'm doing this presentation. This is my sense making tool. So then if someone asks, asks me, Helen, what have you got around how you use OneNote um, for collaborative note taking. I could pull out that particular video or the series of videos through um, time and actually see the process of my progress and what was the problem I started with and what I came up with. Um, and so I use video, but that does not mean that you need to do this. You can use blogs. You can use a variety of different ways. Um, for, for me, I also like using Wakelet. Uh, this is Wakelet. I went to a, um, a conference, uh, an internal auditors conference, believe it or not, to talk about, again, uh, learning for auditors. Uh, and I thought to myself, I need to be able to kind of make sense out of all this. So I curated all my different notes, some tweets, um, photos, some videos about that conference. And can you see how I've added my own value? I actually explained what was happening. So what this created is this is now creates a portfolio. So then what happens is I go back to work and my boss says, Helen, you know, what did you get up to at this internal auditors? Was it just a waste of time? Well, no, it wasn't. Let me show you what I've collected. And he can actually see the whole um, collection and the curation of what it is that I learned. So this then becomes part of my portfolio. OK, so let's move on. The next step is developing some insights, making connections and identifying patterns. This is where you really need to take some time out of everything that you have learned, you experiment on, you've spoken to people, you've tested things out, um, you've trialed things. Now's the time to actually start thinking um, and really querying it so that you can identify some patterns, make some connections, uh, develop some new insights. And this is where people come to you and say, how, how on earth did you make that connection from that to that? This is where it comes from. Um, for me, I like to, at the end of the week, just kind of pull together through a blog post, um, you know, like I've got here, uh, pull together 
some of the things that I did during the week. You know, uh, what do I need more of? What did I learn? What really challenged me? What worked? What didn't work? And you can see that I've pulled together the different tweets, my different experiences. This all then goes into, um, I guess, my online CV. This shows me of where my where my gaps are. And I would highly recommend that, you know, uh, some simple questions to ask yourself. If you want to start with Kenneth Mickelson, who is um, highly recommend you follow him on Twitter. He's written this book, The Neo Generalist with uh, Richard Martin. Highly, highly recommended book. You can see how um, I've used it so often. He's got some questions you can start off with, but you know, you could just basically ask yourself, what did I learn today? What will I do differently? What did I do well today? And how can I embed it as a, pro a process? And how can I set myself up with better support and resources to do it better myself? And these are just three questions that Aaron Pradden also um, ha uh, has. And he also has an excellent uh, website for more resources if you want to know more. So really important, this is your value in companies. Companies should be looking at their people and encouraging their people to do this stuff, okay? So the last two steps are, right, who else needs to know this and who can help? Sorry, who can I help? And the last one is how do I record everything that I learned? Okay, so who else needs to know? How can I help others? Now you might be thinking, oh my God, what do I need to help others? Thing is, this is how you build your trust, your reputation, your profile. If you're genuinely sharing what it is that you're learning, what it is that you're doing at work, you are actually building your profile. People are getting to know that you have an interest in this area. If I wasn't to do this, opportunities for identifying new work projects, identifying new work would never have come to me. So at this point, I would really encourage you to be open and sharing with your knowledge. This is why social networks are needed. We need more diverse thinking and insights and perspectives because this is where their value is. So who else needs to know? What can you do to share? If you've got stream at work, why not share um, a video of uh, you know what it is that you're learning? Uh, if you you know want to get onto YouTube, do that as well. I don't care how you do it, just share what it is that you're doing in some kind of online community or a social network or a platform of some sort. Now, for us at Adopt and Embrace, we've got a Yammer um, community, which we've called The Day I Learned, and we are encouraged that every time we find something new in that community, uh, new in the day, we share it to our colleagues. And this is just one of the communities at Adopt and Embrace, which is constantly being fed. And I trawl through this every single day to pick up on some really great tips that my peers have found that I think, oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. I could put it into practice. So that might be a really good quick win if you've got Yammer, create a Today I Learned community. Uh, if there's any other um, good ideas that you've got, just work them in the um, in the Q and A and see what else uh, is possible. So I'll just go out there and see if there's any. Oh, nothing. Okay. All right. Let's go back. So. Last step is how do I record the results? How do I build my portfolio? And this is your new CV. If you think CV is a, a Word document with some dot points of your key accomplishments, uh, think again. <laughs> what I encourage you to do here, by now you would have seen that you would have amassed a whole heap of different content, um, different resources that you've got. This is so, so valuable. And this is where I would encourage people to somehow kind of record them in some way, whether it is a blog post or whether it's, sorry, on your own blog, whether it is on your own kind of YouTube channel, whether it is on some kind of, you know, your own channel of some sort, then leave them there. But I, do, I would say if that channel is actually enclosed by your company, that if you leave your company, you lose your work, uh, just be mindful of that. That's why sometimes LinkedIn um, uh, does help. So I would encourage you to kind of explore LinkedIn if that is your main social network and look at the projects area and start 
uh, replicating or adding some of your projects. But I would also highly recommend um, that these social networks like LinkedIn, like Twitter, whatever, they don't belong to you. So should anything happen in the future, you're going to lose all your work. So I do encourage you to maybe have your own blog. Um, if it's self-hosted, it's even better because it's your stuff. Your stuff does not get lost, so you control it. Um, so one of the ways is that, yeah, you've got to be able to kind of record your results um, and build a portfolio. There's also different websites, a specific portfolio websites that can do that. Um, if you're interested, you just do a Google search on some portfolio sites that will build that out. Um, one that stands to mind is uh, About Me. So you can do, I think it's aboutme.com, where you can create some links to your work or you can create a web page, whatever it is, go wild, you can do anything. Um, for me, I use my website as my portfolio but I also like to kind of collate, um, uh, you know, different things that I've done. So should someone ask me, you know, Helen, what have you got on um, using Wakelet in Microsoft Teams and how can uh, organisations use plugins like Wakelet uh, for work projects? I could pull those because I've already got a portfolio around a piece of work. All right. So let's move on. So ultimately, this is where I wanted you to start thinking about if you want to learn something new, you have to create a plan. And that plan is number one, you start with your problem and what it is that you want to achieve. And from there, you start looking at who are the people who can help you, what are the tools, the programs, the courses, the education, um, the resources that you can use, and there are many of them, but you will need to curate those. You would need to find out the best ones and curate them so they they create some meaning for you and they provide value for you. You also need to think about if you are integrating your learning in work, how safe is it for you to work? Does your does your boss just jump on you every time you're seen as exploring a, you know, or surfing the website or surfing YouTube? If that's the case, then you're probably not going to be safe sharing your learning. But I do encourage you to have a chat with your manager so they could see the value of this as well. Experiment on something, test it out, make it fun, immerse yourself into a work project and somehow integrate your work uh, with it because then it makes it relevant. Um, look at ways of how you could uh, get some feedback, practice something, um, have some drills in place uh, if it warrants it. Uh, you know, feel free to just try and fail at times, try and break the system down to try and understand it. Then create some meaning from it. Um, you know, uh, reflect on it. Um, uh, you could, once you reflect on it, you, you can see the applications, you can see the insights, you can see where the patterns are forming. You could um, develop new ideas. And from that, then you can start to think, well, I've got this idea. Joe Bloggs actually was talking to me about that idea. How about I go and actually tell him what I've done? That is sharing your value. So looking at how you can share your knowledge to other people and helping them uh, expand their, uh, their learning as well. And last of all, you need a record or a portfolio of evidence of it all. Um, by now, you're going to have to, you're going to be collecting a whole heap of stuff. If you have somewhere you could store it, this is going to be your new online CV. This is going to be where your value is. Um, this is where uh, employers, potential employers would be, should be scrutinizing and looking at it because this shows your value. This shows your thinking visibly to them. So how do I make a start? Um, easy you can uh, use the template, that's a start, and that just gets you thinking to create the plan, okay? Once you've got the plan, you need to devote some time to, uh, to doing it, okay? So one of the ways I do this is I use Planner. So um, I have my buckets in Planner, so I've got, you know, what's the product knowledge that I need to learn from Microsoft? You know, what are the recordings I need to watch? What are the books I need to read? What are the experiments I need to try on, uh, to try out? I also have my Helen Experiments tweets automatically flowing in with Power Automate into Planner. That was a little experiment I did. So they're feeding in to this Planner bucket as well. So can you see how my learning gets 
it's kind of like all weaving into each other. So that's where I, I would highly recommend you weave your learning into what you're doing for work using the tools that you've got at work. So in summary, we've got, you know, make a plan for what you'd like to learn and then use the template that I've got here as a start and immerse yourself into it as much as possible. Full immersion, um, dabble around with it, play with it, have fun with it. Think about the process of what you're learning. So don't always think about the end result. Think about the process of what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it in a particular way and what are the results from it. So think about it as a process as you're learning for it and continually ask yourself questions, but then don't forget to reflect on it. Have some time at the end of the day, at the end of the week or whatever it is to kind of sit and think, where am I going with this? How has it helped me? How can I apply it? Make time for learning every single day. If you don't have time for learning, find ways to integrate it into your work. After all, we're in work at eight hours of the day. I see eight hours of learning right there. Um, so make it fun, make it interesting, make it challenging, um, and then share what you know to other people. Okay, before I actually go on, I just wanna see if there are any questions. Thanks, Eddie, and thanks, John. Awesome. Right. We've got a five more minutes to go, but um, in a nutshell, uh, if you want more information, if you want to contact me for anything, I'm all across the social networks. Uh, find me on Twitter. That is my, I guess that's my online neighbourhood. That's where I hang out. And uh, I'm also on LinkedIn. And uh, my blog site is activatelearning.com.au. Feel free to check out my blog site there. Do a search on anything you want. You could find, I've been blogging, like I said, for many years. But if you're interested in uh, the stuff that we do at Adopt and Embrace, we have recently written a book on Microsoft Teams. And uh, we also have um, uh, the book plus also a framework that you can use. If you want more information, go into that teamsbook.info website to get more information about that. Now, I'm also a community member for the Adopt and Embrace Academy, and that is the website there. If you're interested with um, connecting with a whole group of people all around the world who are interested in adoption and change of Office 365, we have our own little academy community where I put up a whole heap of different content that is not publicly available. Um, and uh, yeah, you could connect with a whole heap of people and see, get specific resources. So that is me, that is the presentation for um, building your professional personal learning plan. But I also wanna thank the sponsors who have made Microsoft 365 May possible. Thank you so much for your sponsorship. And uh, what I'd like to do now is there's still four minutes to go. I'll just quickly go, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask them now and I'll be more than happy to answer them before we go on to our next session, which I'll be also uh, participating in because it'll be Lynn Mertnane who's going to be looking at systems learning. So something I'm interested in, hope you are too. So just before I say a final goodbye, I'm gonna see if there's any questions. Okay, here we go. Anonymous, do you use your own website because you can make it visible to all rather than just recording everything in something like one? Yes. The reason I use web, the website is because I pay for my website. I know that if something happens down the track um, and that company goes bust or whatever, I own what is on there. I have everything linked. My work does not disappear overnight. That's the one issue. The second, uh, the second reason is I, in the past, have had so many jobs. I go from job to job to job. If I kept all my work inside a company firewall, when I go outside of that firewall, bang, I can't, I can't access this, access it. Um, there's no proof that I've done it. Um, but then you might say, but you know, isn't it sensitive? Isn't it confidential? Yes, that work is, but what you learn from it, you can actually make generic and make open. <gasps> Fail. Can you hear that? That's my phone. Anyway, hope that answers the question.
All right, then I'm going to say my goodbyes. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating and um, see you at the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.